Hello, Neil Knights. This is Principal Perez, along with my friend Clyde Knight. And I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're getting all your homework completed, uh, your dream box lessons completed, reading your Mayan books, and staying safe. We're here to talk to you about uh, the new CPR video that's coming out, produced by our teachers. There's some really good information there, important information about our new CPR rules as we prepare for the opening of school here in the future. Hopefully that'll happen here in the next uh, month or so. We don't know ex the exact date, but we wanna start getting ready. So this video is gonna prepare you uh, so that when we return to school, you'll know the new CPR rules. So enjoy, pay attention to the video and stay safe. Take care. Hello Needham students and families. My name is Mrs. Hammer. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Needham and I wanted to show you our new PBIS expectations for when we come back to campus. So we have the three W's at our school now where we're gonna focus on wearing your mask, washing your hands, watch your distance, stay six feet apart. So if we could all remember those three W's while we're on campus, that would be wonderful. So our new CPR expectations will start with in the classroom. So when we're in the classroom, a way we can show that we're courageous is to encourage others to wear your mask and wash your hands, be curious, share ideas, and have the avid mindset. Uh, being a problem solver in the classroom would be to use the hand sanitizer and wash hands often, think before you act, and use your own supplies. And a way to show you're ready to learn in the classroom would be respect spacing and desk shields and show effort and listen to and respect others. While you're in the cafeteria, to show that you're courageous, wear your mask unless you're eating, try new foods, and have good manners. To show that you're a problem solver in the cafeteria, wash your hands, be courteous, be patient in line and watch your distance, and clean up after yourself. And to show that you're ready to learn in the cafeteria, walk with care and watch your distance, chew your food, swallow your words, and fuel your body. In the walkways, to show that you're courageous, wear your mask, do the right thing always, walk with purpose, and watch your distance. Uh, to show that you're a problem solver in the walkways, we want you to watch your distance, be courteous, stay clear of doors, keep three feet away from building walls, and then to show that you're ready to learn in the walkways, we want you to watch your distance, respect the quiet zones, and be with your scholarly line. On the playground, to show that you're courageous, wear your mask, watch your distance, and be a good sport. To show that you're a problem solver, we want you to wash your hands at the hand stations, encourage, don't discourage, report safety concerns, and handle conflicts with kind words. To show that you're ready to learn on the playground, watch your distance, freeze at the bell, quick and quiet lines, and hands to yourself at all times. In the bathroom, to show that you're courageous, wear your mask, take pride in your surroundings, value privacy, respect the property, and to show that you're a problem solver in the bathroom, wash your hands for 20 seconds, report concerns one at a time in the bathroom, flush properly. To show that you're ready to learn in the bathroom, watch your distance, return promptly, and throw away your pass. Thank you so much. We can't wait to see you back at Needham School. And please make sure you refer to this video so that we can all work together and make being on campus safe and enjoyable. Take care. Hi, Needham Knights. It's me, Ms. Trejo, the school counselor. Today I'm gonna to be reading A Little Spot Stays Home, a book about viruses and safe distancing. 
and the book is by Diane Alper. So let's get going. A Little Spot Stays Home. Hi, I'm a little safety spot. I'm here to help you stay safe when the virus starts spreading too fast and gets a lot of people very sick. What is a virus? They're asking. Viruses are tiny particles that can make you ill. They are so small that you could only see them with the microscope. These particles are also known as germs. These germs love to stick to your hands, doorknobs, cardboard boxes, toys. That is why we disinfect surfaces like countertops and objects. A virus can move from an object like a doorknob to your hand. Once it's on your hand, it can enter your body when you touch your eyes, nose, mouth to make you sick. So you see right here, eyes, nose, mouth. What are we going to do about this? Well, that's why it's so important to wash your hands to clean off the germs before you eat, after you go to the bathroom, and after you're done playing. So you're gonna use soap, wash your hands really well for at least 20 seconds using the happy birthday song twice. So you could sing it. If you don't know like 20 seconds, you could either count that or you could sing the happy birthday song twice. When a virus enters your body, you can start to have symptoms. These don't make you feel very good. They can be a fever, a cough, a sore throat. People can spread a virus more when they have symptoms because germs come out of their nose, their mouth, and when they cough or sneeze. So if you become sick, you should stay at home or go to the doctor, which can help prevent others from getting ill. So sore throat, cough, and fever. Those are the symptoms they were talking about. Let me get this camera angle going. And I know you guys know how to cough and your elbow. If you are having symptoms, wearing a mask is a great way to prevent the virus from spreading. This also shows you are being kind by not wanting to spread the germs to others. So that's very important right here. You want to make sure that you are kind. Even if you're not sick, wearing the mask is being kind. And if you are feeling a little sick or down, you know, with the weather here, like, it is being kind wearing a mask. So if you see here, if you're healthy, wearing a mask can protect you if you are around someone who is coughing and sneezing, right? But so if you think of that, hey, I need to wear my mask because I'm gonna be kind to my classmates, my teachers, my peers. So I think that's a good way to remind yourself to wear that mask, right? When someone is sick and sneezes, germs can spread from their nose or mouth up to six feet. So for everyone, a safe distance is six feet, the length of your bed. If you don't have a tissue, you should always cough and sneeze into your upper sleeve or inner elbow. And six feet long is giving you an example right here. But you're going to be seeing some of those signs at school, six feet apart. So that's what they mean by that. So that way, if you do sneeze by accident or there's some germs going around, six feet apart, it won't get to you. Plus, wearing the mask, so that's double protection there. Some viruses can be very contagious and, out, and cause an outbreak. When this happens, older adults like grandmas and grandpas, as well as people with low or compromised immune systems can get sick very easily, and it can be very harmful. We need to be responsible and help protect them we can do this by hand washing and limiting contact with others by keeping a safe distance. So this is also being responsible by wearing a mask. During an outbreak, if safe distance doesn't slow down the virus fast enough, everyone will need to stay home. This means no parties or seeing friends or extended family. Schools may also be closed for a while too. This is called a stay at home order. 
When everyone stays home, doctors have time to find out more about the virus and prepare for patients. It also helps them find a treatment that can help before the virus hurts a lot of people. When we need to stay at home, can we leave our house at all? This is what they're asking. That's a good question. Great question. You can go for a walk with your immediate family as long as you are at a safe distance from others. People also leave their homes if it's absolutely necessary, like to get food, go to the doctor, if they have to go to a job, and if a job is considered essential. What are essential workers, they ask? Essential workers need to be at work to help us keep safe. They help treat sick people and deliver um, and stock important items that we need at the store. The, these people are doctors, nurses, police officers, grocery store workers, and delivery workers, just to name a few. We should be very thankful for these people who have the courage to go to work every day essential workers. And I really think they need to add school staff on here too. They need to add teachers and, and, and the lunch ladies and everyone in the office and the principal. These are essential workers because they are coming to the classrooms. They're coming on site, even though you guys are at home. Staying at home will require a lot of patience and support from each other too. It can also be a great time to spread kindness by thanking all the people who help keep us safe. So I like that word. It came up again, kindness. So you want to be kind. So not only to your peers and your classroom um, people and the people at school, um, it's saying to be kind to everybody, right? So right now we're going through this. Everyone's in this together. Let's be kind to everybody. Thank you, essential workers. They're making a poster. They're posting it on their house. I'm pretty sure you guys have some ideas of what you could do to show your kindness around the community and at our school. There may be times you feel sad that you can't see your friends and family, but there are other ways to connect with them. You can video chat or call them on the telephone. And you guys are very, very tech savvy. So you guys know how to do that. You guys can Zoom with them, right? And then um, do FaceTime. You guys know how to communicate with family and friends, or you can write a letter and send it through the mail. You can even decorate, decorate the envelope or include some artwork too. And I like that. I like getting mail. Um, this time could be very difficult for a lot of us and getting a letter in the mail can brighten someone's day. It would brighten my day. Since school buildings may be closed, you will have to learn as much as you can at home. And that can be fun too. You can learn math by measuring ingredients while baking. You can sort out clothes, um, count, counting shirts and matching socks. That's kind of considered math right there too. You see that? You can learn a new skill or spend extra time with your immediate family. It can inspire you to be very creative or encourage you to get organized and tackle new projects. Hopefully I was able to help you understand more about viruses and why people need to keep a safe distance and stay at home. It's important to keep a positive outlook and remember that viruses don't last forever. If we work together, things will get better. Thank you, essential workers. But not only that, we need to keep a positive outlook and kindness going. So this is a book about staying at home, but we've been staying at home. So I'm hoping that we're gonna return back to school. And if we're already in school, we gotta keep positive and keep kindness with each other and if our friend and our peer is sick, if someone we know is sick, remember that, just keep positive and kind. Don't make the situation worse by being negative, saying mean things, being rude to each other. We're all in this together and I can't wait to see you guys back at Needham. Thank you, bye. Now a word from our teachers. What does it mean to be kind? 
Hello, I'm Mrs. Hammer, and I wanted to share with you about what I think kindness is. Kindness is coming from a good place in your heart. Um, smiling to people that maybe you don't know or maybe someone that might feel sad. Maybe holding a door open to someone who's coming into a building after you have opened the door. Sharing with people is showing kindness and just speaking nice words instead of rude words. Also, one thing that I heard a long time ago is, do you want to be a person that includes or excludes? And my rule is we always want to include people to make them feel welcome and to show kindness. So be that person that always includes people. That's a way that we get to meet new people and learn new things. So when you're at Needham School, make sure that you smile. Even through your mask, your eyes can show that you're smiling. And show kindness to others. Thank you. Who should we be kind to? My name is Mrs. Tanell, and I'm a third grade teacher at Needham. And Mrs. Blankenship is kind enough to do the video with me on who we should be kind to. Yes. Hi, I'm Mrs. Blankenship. I teach second grade. And today we're going to be talking about kindness, being kind to others. When we uh, come back to school, there are some things that we need to really think about um, doing when we come back to school. So, uh, kindness is one of the things we want to focus on and being kind not only to others but yourself and uh, making sure when uh, you're not feeling well that or someone else is not feeling well that we need to be kind and listen to them and um, also be considerate of their feelings. No, oh, I, I agree completely with what Mrs. Blankenship was saying. Um, if, when you come back, when we come back to school and someone is running a fever, uh, they're going to have to go to the office and get their temperature taken. And we really want to make sure that they are going to get the help that they need, um, COVID or not, right? If somebody's not feeling good, we need to be compassionate because we don't want anyone to ever uh, feel bad, okay? So who do we need to be kind to? We need to be kind to everyone in our classroom you need to be kind to me right your teacher what if i don't feel very well okay we need to be kind to the ladies in the office mr perez mr eddie honestly everyone at the school and don't forget to be kind to yourself too if you don't feel good you need to let us know okay and we can get you the help that you need COVID or not we want you guys to uh, be kind to everyone okay all right i think that is it thank you very much bye how can we be kind to others? Hello students, this is Mrs. Neal. Today I want to talk about ways that we can be kind to people. We can be kind to people by greeting them with a smile, by giving them a nice compliment, by helping them with a task that needs to be accomplished, by sharing our knowledge and therefore increasing their knowledge. All of these are examples of what is within our power to create a kinder world. How can we be kind to others? Let's start by following the three W's. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Remember, the distance should be about six feet between you and another person. Pay special attention to the CPR rules posted around the school for different ways in which you can be safe. Please stay home if you are feeling sick. Symptoms can include running a fever, or having a cough. If one of your friends or someone you know is feeling sick, use kind words such as, I hope you feel better or get well soon. Let's make Needham a safe and kind school when we come back.